Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today we're going to be going over the Brussels Gambit, which is a variation in the Sicilian offense. So it starts out with e4, c5, the Sicilian, and then after knight to f3, black plays the move pawn to f5. This is the Brussels Gambit. Many times I'll make a video on a gambit and show you all the fun ways that you can play that gambit. Now you can catch your opponent off guard and it's going to be a lot of fun. This video is going to be a bit different because playing as black, I really don't recommend playing the Brussels Gambit in any capacity. And so this video is going to be more about how white should attack the Brussels Gambit if your opponent ever decides to surprise you with this opening. So white is going to take this pawn right here on f5. Sometimes you may see pawn pushing forward to uh, e5, but I recommend taking this pawn here on f5. And so we're going to be looking at the variations that black could continue from here and how white should respond. You could see d5 opening up for this light square bishop here. You could see knight to c6, pretty common in the Sicilian defense. Knight to f6, trying to develop on the king side as well, or maybe something basic like d6, solidifying the pawn chain, opening up for this light square bishop. So those are the variations we're going to be looking at on how to attack the Brussels gambit. I also want to touch on why I think this is a bad opening for black. Usually with a gambit, you have some sort of compensation, whether that's a, a tempo advantage, you have a strong attack against your opponent. There's something that you're trying to get for giving up that pawn and material. And this almost looks like a king's gambit play where you give up that F pawn. But in the king's gambit, there's a couple things that are different about this. One is black goes second. And so they're already down a move, but also you they had their first move as c5. And so this doesn't do anything for the king's gambit play, which is develop very quickly to the king's side of the board, open up the center pawn so you can get your bishops involved into the game. And so black's really down two moves if they're playing that sort of opening, like the king's gambit, where you get your rook here to f8, have a strong attack on the semi-open file. If you look at it here, the most aggressive pieces, usually in these gambits, is the bishops. Well, all the bishops are blocked off here by the two central pawns have not moved at all. You can get the knights involved, and so we'll look at what that looks like. But you can tell all this has really done is weakened the king side of the board. Now, it has removed the central e pawn for white, but it's just now moved over here to f5, and it's a troublesome square that we'll look at here in a minute for how black's going to deal with. So that's why I don't prefer playing this at black in any capacity, even if it's a blitz game. But if you're white, you play against Sicilian defense, it's always good to understand, what do I do if my opponent throws something tricky at me? The first version we are going to look at is d5. This opens up one of the central pawns and allows this light square bishop here on c8 to attack this pawn here on f5. So makes a lot of sense. If you can get back this material that you lost here on f5, get a very powerful piece involved into the attack, this sounds like a win. Now, anytime you see this d pawn move, doesn't matter if it's d6 or d5, you should be thinking about getting your bishop here to b5, putting the opponent in check and forcing them to make a decision on how they want to continue. Now, they could play knight to c6. They could also play bishop to d7. We'll look at that as well. If they play knight to c6 here, which is a pretty common move, then you're going to be playing knight to e5. This knight here on c6 is pinned down to the king. Anytime you have a piece pinned down, it's always good to attack that piece because they can't move. And so this knight here on e5 is a very strong attack here. And there's a couple ways they could continue. One of the first options is, okay, I'm just not going to worry about this right now. I can just play bishop takes here on f5. Well, from here, white's going to take here on c6. And then the pawn takes on c6. Now, black could, uh, they could try something like queen to b6. And they'll actually use this in another variation. But I want to show you what's wrong with this position here. Because you can see this is attacking the bishop and the knight right here. Now, the knight wants to move, but then the queen could take the bishop. But white has the move knight to d4. This is a discovered check. So the bishop here on b5 is attacking the king. But also, this knight here on d4 is defending 
this bishop here on b5. So the queen can't just take it because then the knight would capture right here. So if we look at the different options, uh, one option would just be king to d8. But now you can see that this knight here on d4 can take the bishop on f5. So this is not going to be a very good position uh, for black. Yes, they could take the bishop, but you can see uh, black's already lost two minor pieces. Doesn't really have a safe king right here. All of a sudden, white can get their queen involved into the game. Uh, very easy for white to dominate this position. Now, if black says, okay, well, my king's under attack, I can just move my bishop back here to d7. You can, but now the queen to h5, and this is a very difficult attack for black to deal with they could play g6 to stop this now bishop takes on d7 king takes d7 and now queen over to d5 check and now it's very difficult for black to deal uh, with all of the threats that we have so if we come back a few moves instead of that queen to b6 going to be much better if they just take with their pawn here on c6 uh, but now bishop to c6 Maybe bishop here to d7 to protect that. And then bishop takes here on d5. I do recognize that you could take this rook here on a8. And then they could just swing over here and take your bishop. Uh, I personally think it's good to continue. You're still gobbling up material here. So d5, you still have a central bishop right here. You can castle on the king side, get your queen involved into the game. Uh, you are winning as white, but it is good to have powerful pieces still involved into the game. You can see this dark square bishop still can't move, has to do something here. And so I, I really like this over taking this rook here on a8. And after the knight comes to e5, attacking that pinned piece here on c6, black does not have to take here on f5. They could play knight to f6. White's still going to continue with knight takes here on c6. And really, black needs to be thinking about queen to b6. Now, we talked about before why that was not a good move. And that was because white had to move knight to d4. And then that was not only defending this bishop here on b5, but also is attacking the bishop that was here on f5. That's no longer the case because black did not take that pawn here on f5. So this is not going to be as good because now just king to d8 and all of a sudden knight to e6. This is an outpost, but okay, after the bishop's exchange with the knight, uh, then the queen takes here on b6. This is not as good. So uh, if in this position, knight to d4 is not the move. Instead, white's going to play the move knight to a7, which looks somewhat odd. But you have to remember that this is a discovered check. So the bishop here on b5 is putting the black king in check. And also this knight here on a7 is still protecting this bishop here on b5. So the queen can't take it. So maybe king to f7. If this is the case, knight to c8. So it just took a pawn. Now it's taking a bishop right here. So even if the queen were to take here on b5, that's fine. Knight to c3 attacking this queen right here. Yes, this knight's going to probably fall, but white is up in material, and you can see that this king is completely exposed, and white's going to be able to attack that for the rest of the game. If we come back a few moves, instead of king to f7, they have other options. They could play king to d8. Same thing, I just go ahead and take their bishop here on c8. The, the goal really is to take a pawn and a bishop. Just gobble up more material, put their king in a worse position once the king moves. He can't castle anymore, so that's going to be good. It could also play bishop to d7. This is blocking the bishop. In this case, go ahead and take with your bishop right here. After the king takes, maybe queen to f3. Just getting more material involved into the game. And this also puts a threat on this knight to f6 because... If this knight moves, it really exposes this pawn here on d5 because this knight's the only piece that's defending it. And then the queen can take here on d5. And, you know, they could try to use it as an outpost, knight to e4 at some point. Uh, white can castle on the king side if they want to. They could play knight to uh, c3 at some point. Black's going to be using a move up here to take this knight. Uh, so white just has to realize that that knight's gone, but still up in material. Very good position. The king is exposed and can really attack that for the rest of the game. 
So we come back to this initial setup after d5, bishop to b5, putting our opponent in check. They could play bishop to d7. Stopping that's fine. We're going to be playing the same thing, knight to e5, attacking this pinned piece right here. And the reason I like this is it almost is baiting them to play the bishop takes on b5, because why not? The problem is this is going to fail because white has the move queen to h5 check and there's not a lot of great ways for black to deal with this you have pawn to g6 to stop that pawn takes here on g6 they can't just take with their pawn because that's checkmate right there so we definitely know that that loses so instead the best move would be knight to f6 attacking the queen but okay now we can push forward with g7 and now when they take our queen we can take their rook and promote to a queen right here so you can see We've only lost that bishop. They've lost their rook. We've gobbled up some pawns here. They've gobbled up one of our pawns. We've taken two of their pawns. And their king is still in the center of the board. This dark square bishop's not helping. And it can't move right now because it's pinned down by this queen. White has a very strong attack. Can castle on the king side. Uh, play either d3 uh, to block the bishop or some point d4 get the dark square bishop involved into the game so this is going to be a pretty easy game for white so that's why you know playing the knight to e5 early in that position almost baiting them to play this bishop takes on uh, b5 is definitely going to be a good option now they don't have to take if they don't take here uh, they could play knight to f6 we're just going to take their bishop here on d7. They pretty much need to take with this knight. If they took with their other knight, that would be terrible because then we're playing the queen to h5 and we run into the same thing as before. But assuming they take with their knight here on uh, d7, we can just play d4, preparing to get our Dorsker bishop to ball involved into the game. We still have our queen threat at all times. Uh, so still very, very strong attack that white has against black. So what if they don't play d5? They're not looking to get their central pawns involved into the game, get their bishops involved. Maybe they want to get their knights involved. So one of those might be knight to c6. Just start pushing in the center of the board here, d4. And this is very similar to how you'll normally be playing the Sicilian defense is knight to f3, pawn pushing forward here to d5. If they take with their pawn, that's great. You just take your with your knight, same as you normally play in the Sicilian defense, and you still have that threat of queen to h5. Now, if they don't take, they could play uh, d5 themselves. In this case, anytime you see that d pawn move, you should be thinking bishop to b5. It's either going to be check or pinning down material. In this case, they played knight to c6, so you're pinning down this knight right here. You have the threat at some point of knight to e5 attacking that pinned piece. Always be looking to attack pinned material. If they play pawn to a6, sure, you can just go ahead and exchange right here. Take with their pawn. You could take their pawn here on c5. That's fine. Uh, if they decide to maybe take this pawn here on f5, one of the reasons you play d5 is to play bishop takes here on f5. That's fine. You can just take their own pawn here on c5. You still have their knight pinned down. So I think this is going to be a good variation as well. Maybe they don't play d5. Maybe they play queen to b6. Many times you play the Sicilian and then you want to try to get your queen over here to b6 at some point. You can push forward if you want to, uh, attacking this knight here on uh, c6. But really, I just would take this material here on c5. If they take with their queen, that's fine. Bishop to d3, castle on the king side. Uh, you can see they really haven't made a ton of improvement in their position. This bishop on d3 also protects the pawn here on f5 from this queen. Uh, so all in all, really like this position from white. If they try to get their other knight involved at the beginning of the game, knight to f6, really the only option I see here. You're going to continue same thing. Pawn to d4, same as a normal Sicilian defense. You're attacking in the center with d4. If they play d5, same as before, bishop to b5, uh, check. If they decide to take, knight takes here on d4, which we are used to seeing here. Uh, if they... Play their knight, you have a lot of different options as far as what you want to do. But if they play d5, same as before, 
bishop to b5 check and even if we come back to the very beginning maybe they don't play knight to f6 they could just play d6 bishop to b5 check and then depending on where they go you have lots of options here uh, the one thing that's going to be different is you don't have the move knight to e5 to attack that pinned piece here if they play like knight to uh, c6. So just be aware of that. You don't want to lose your knight right away. But you can castle on the king side. You can attack the center of the board with d4 to get your dark square bishop involved into the game. So a lot of different options. But at the end of the day, the Brussels Gambit, not something I recommend uh, as black. And I love a good Gambit. I love to catch my opponent off guard if you have enough compensation. Even if you're just playing a Rapid or a Blitz game, uh, I do like to find Gambits that I can find an edge. The Brussels Gambit, I don't think that is the case. So you may not run into it all that often, but you definitely may see it if you run against the Sicilian defense. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of how to attack uh, the Brussels Gambit if you ever run into it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section. Also, if there's other videos you want uh, me to go over, let me know in the comments. If you have questions about the video or any of the variations, you can also ask me that in the comments. I will be replying to all those as well. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.